Feldschlössen. Shop to be drinking shitty beer. Welcome to another edition of Bands, Bikes and Booze Reviews. I was motioning about the other day in uh, Asda's and I came across this in the bargain basement section of the beers. And uh, this is called Felschlersen. Now there's two breweries with the same name, Felschlersen, which in German means small castle in the field. One of these breweries is in Germany, from Dresden in the east, which is where this comes from. The other one is a Swiss brewery. In fact, it's the biggest Swiss brewery and uh, they produce beer and they also produce Lipton's tea. Uh, sorry, Lipton's iced tea. I could do a whole channel about tea. Anyway, let's get the uh, let's get this stuff uh, reviewed. This is Felschlersen. Um, it's from Dresden in the east of Germany, as I just said. Um, I've had it on good authority from a mate that it's quite good. There is very little about this brewery on the internet, so I'm not sure how big they are. Um, and uh, it says that this is produced in Germany, and I've just read on the back, produced in France. Producta in Francia. Why is this produced in France? Now, I really shouldn't cast aspersions on anything French, but alarm bells do ring when I see French beer. Um, anyway, I'm going to ignore them prejudices and I'm just going to review this on its own merits. This actually conforms to the Reinheitsgebot. It is in a 500 milliliter bottle. It is 4.5% in the alcohol uh, ABV. It's got quite a nice label on it. I don't know if you can see that or not. It's uh, it's quite a tall, slim bottle. There's the front. There's the back. I really had, wish I hadn't seen that was brewed in France. Anyway, let's just get it open. There is the cap. I hope you can see that or not. Let me let me get some vision on that one. There you go. That's that was going to go in the collection, but it's just hopped out of the cup. Let's get it in the glass. Oh, that doesn't smell good. That smells skunky. That really didn't smell good. That smelled of rotten vegetables and wet cardboard. It shouldn't smell like that because it's in a brown bottle but I'm putting this into a uh, vice beer glass on the stupid assumption that I thought this was uh, brewed in Germany but it's not, it's brewed in France but it is a German company. Let's just get it out in the glass. It doesn't smell that great to be honest. And I'm wondering whether something's been lost in the way that it's been brewed in France. It's very, very high carbonation on that. I don't know if you can see that or not, but it's going for it. There's a three finger head on it, but that's probably because of the glass that it's been poured into. But there is just masses of carbonation in that. Benson's trying to get in. I'm just gonna pour the rest of that in there. Oh, it doesn't smell good. It really does not smell good. I'm really hoping this is not going to be a bad beer. 
It was 95 pence, it was cheap. And I thought I'd got a bargain because it was German beer, conforms to the Reinheitsgebot, the purity laws, but that doesn't smell good. Let's get it down the hatch. I'd love to know what malt is being used in this. Because it's it's very strong. It tastes almost artificial to me. I've let this calm down a bit a little bit. That horrible smell has gone now, and I don't know what was causing that, but it smelled really bad. Now that it's this is still cold, this has been in the fridge for a couple of days. Now it doesn't smell too bad, it hasn't got that skunky, cardboardy taste that it did have. I, I don't know what that is, but I'm not getting that now. And now it actually smells quite pleasant. It's got um, sweet lager malt and a little bit of lemon citrus, as you would expect. It's a lovely straw colour. The carbonation has calmed down now as well. I'm wondering whether it's something to do with pouring it into a, a warmer glass cold beer. It does look a nice colour. and As I say, the carbonation has calmed down a bit. And it's tasting a bit better now as well. Now it doesn't taste too bad. That's really weird. <clears throat> I was on the verge of giving that a one out of 10 and saying avoid and pouring it down a sink. I've let it stand for about five minutes and that horrible smell, that skunky cardboardy smell was gone now. I'm not getting that at all. Maybe a very, very tiny, tiny hint of that. But when I opened it, the bottle, it was just, it just flew out of the bottle, like a genie. <laughs> it's not too bad now, and I'm drinking it, and it's not tasting too bad. I mean, it's not, it's not fantastic. It's not on, you know, the level of, you know, like Augustiner lager or something like that. But it's not a bad beer. Yeah, now it's now it's a bit better. Yeah, and it's okay. It's okay. Now it's calmed down a little bit. The head's calmed down. The carbonation has calmed down. It's quite a drinkable... Um, I wouldn't say a pilsner. It's just a lager. It's, it's touted as a lager. So it's like a bottom fermented... Bottom fermented, uh, you know, average German lager. Yeah, it's okay. Perfectly drinkable. What will I give it? I'm going to give it 6 out of 10. And I'm being generous there because, as I say, the initial smell on that was not good at all. Um, what redeems it is that it was 95 pence and as it says on the label it conforms to the 15-16 Reinheitsgebot purity laws as a beer on its own what does it taste like it's okay it's got everything you'd expect from a lager but it's not amazing it's just yeah it's okay so yeah 6 out of 10 would I recommend it? Well, it's 95 pence in Asda. So if you're going to a party, yeah, I probably would buy quite a lot of these. I'd whack them in the fridge, I'd get them as cold as possible, I'd open them, 
leave them for a while make sure I drank it out of a glass just to let all that horrible skunky cardboardy type smell wet cardboard type smell but yeah it's a cheap beer six out of ten would I recommend it yes if you're on a budget and if you're on a budget and you want some decent German lager then yeah it's okay it's not too bad and remember beer is working class champagne <laughs>